loud and clear? I do hope so. Did everybody have a nice Christmas and Happy New Year? Did anybody have one? I hope so. Hi everybody. It's good to see uh, so many names that I recognize. Already got some questions to answer as well and I've got a whole bunch of stuff I want to cover so I'll have to keep moving. Now um, a couple of things that occurred to me uh, from the from the get-go. If you have a question, highlight my name. Somebody say how you do that again. I think it's an option click on the on the the thing at the bottom. But make my name show up. You won't see it. Just trust that it's working. And that way, uh, I'll, my name will be in orange, and I'll know you've got a question, just like Walter did. Walter highlighted my name and asked me a question, and I'll answer that one in just a second. Um, if you have a suggestion, do this. Highlight my name and, t and write suggestion after it. That way I'll know to skip over it and read it later. Okay? And the last thing is, if you're just chatting amongst yourselves, which is fine, I'm fine with that, do me a favor and just put your chat in brackets. That way I'll know that anything in brackets is none of my damn business and I will not read it, I'll stay out of it. But if it's anything to do with me or you're trying to get my attention, don't put it in brackets. So that's the deal. Is that okay? Um, I'm going to be asking for your help tonight in uh, answering a poll for me. It's only going to have one question, but we're going to be doing a poll right here. You'll vote on, on YouTube. And also, um, well, I'll tell you what, let me go through my stuff in order. Somebody asked a question just a moment ago about times, and it, this is an important question, except I can't find it now. Yeah, it's Ron asked. What time is Zoom 2? Two times are listed, 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. There is no such thing as Zoom 2, Ron. Um, that's, uh, uh, you're thinking of the Patreon Zoom meeting. That's where I meet every other Saturday with, with uh, my Patreon supporters. They have two hours to, to do whatever they want to do, uh, cover whatever topics they want to cover, and just hang out. And that is every other Saturday. And this week, it is at 8 a.m. because I'm doing this one to, to make it easier for Europe and uh, Australia. So I alternate between 8 a.m. Uh, one week this week, and then in two weeks, it'll be 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and it's always Central Standard Time. You might be confusing it with the second live stream which is gonna be like this, and that's called Macro Talk. This is Macro Talk. There is also a Macro Talk 2, T-O-O. -O. Macro Talk 2 happens on Thursday, and that is at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Central Time, which uh, is the same as 8 p.m. in the evening in, Austra in uh, Europe, or nine o'clock if you're a bit further east. Okay, so that's the deal. There are two more things this week after tonight. There's another uh, macro talk for Europe at 2 p.m. on Thursday or 8 p.m. their time on Thursday. And then on Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning, we have a two-hour Patreon-only get-together. It's called the Patreon Picnic. Um, I don't know why. I, that's what I wrote down, and I don't question such things. So... Um, before I dive into the other things I want to tell you about, I'm going to answer the question that Walter asked. Do I stack RAW or JPEG? Well, it's a trick question I know because Walter does that to me. You can't stack RAW. You cannot stack RAW images regardless of what some stacking programs will tell you about RAW in, RAW out kind of deals. You can't. Uh, to, to stack the images, they need to be converted to TIFFs, which happens either behind the scenes or up front. Uh, so your options are to stack TIFFs or to stack JPEGs. 
and uh, with one exception, I stack TIFFs. And the exception is when I'm uh, creating um, a stereo pair. If I'm doing the, the stereo um, uh, 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 stacking, so that I'm creating an, an artificial stereo pair so I can see it in 3D, uh, what I'll do is I'll use JPEGs and I'll stack in Pmax only in Xerine because it's much, 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 much quicker than, than trying to do my usual workflow. So that's the only time. Otherwise, it's always TIFFs. That's my preference. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm going to quickly say hi to everybody like David and Walter and Robert that I already said hi to. And uh, Joseph, welcome. Glad you made it from Detroit. Um, and uh, uh, Patrick, I would um, say good avond or good evening to you if uh, I wasn't going to insult your accent, but I just did. Alistair, welcome from uh, Cumbria. Wet and windy. There's a surprise in January. Hard to believe. Uh, let me see. Gilles, welcome. I need to talk to you about your choices of subjects for the photography competition, Gilles. Um, lace, vodka, and vitamin C, I think, were the main ingredients. That's problematic. I discuss it in some detail in the, uh, in the results video as you will hear, much to your embarrassment. Okay, moving on. Uh, let me see. Now, how come it's, uh, uh, it's sunny in Detroit? Is it really? I thought Detroit was terribly wintry uh, during the winter. Huh, scary stuff. And let me see. Oh, my, I see my name showing up in orange all over the place all of a sudden. I'm using, by the way, the uh, live chat as opposed to the top chat because it turns out when I use the top chat, I miss some of your um, messages. Don't ask me why that happens. Well, I guess it filters them or something. So uh, in whistling down here. Ron, did I answer your question sufficiently uh, with enough detail about the, the schedule for the week? I hope so. Uh, who has webbed toes? Sounds awful. Bruce, I'm glad you made it. Tomorrow. We haven't made it yet. You made it to tomorrow. Good. It's, uh, how was your, your uh, Christmas, Bruce, down under? Was it uh, satisfactory? Lots of fun family stuff, I'm sure. And uh, Blair, welcome. Nice beard, by the way. Good, loud and clear. All right, everybody's doing well. Jamie, good to see you. And macro everything around me. Back at it in Florida. Excellent. All right, so, Steve, glad you made it. Still snowing in Vancouver for the first time in history. Toluca, hey. Alan, uh, your name came up um, earlier on when I was talking to myself uh, about you, about your picture from the competition. There's a, a lot of people that uh, uh, are going to wish I hadn't done this video on the competition. That's what I want to talk to you about, the competition. The results are in, uh, the, the, the grading, scoring, judging has been done. The video has actually been recorded and uh, I am going to be editing it tonight um, but I, I doubt I'll get it all done because it runs a bit long I'm doing something differently this time uh, for those of you who don't know it we do a competition every month uh, we, we start it on the first of the month when the um, uh, the topic is announced the subject and then we um, uh, shut the uh, uh, collection down at midnight on the last day of the month and I get the entries and I uh, go through them, I judge them, I make a video and uh, as soon as I possibly can thereafter I publish the video. The winner gets, well, has got and will get again prizes that uh, this is one of the things I want to talk to you about uh, but also you will have your your photograph the, the winning photograph will be displayed prominently. In fact, it's the first thing you see when you land on my homepage of the website for the channel. And also, uh, it's going to be showing up somewhere else. 
uh, after I speak to Curly Toes, who's in charge of this. But we now have a better way for you to submit your photographs. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. There is some reluctance uh, for, for people who are not regularly over there to go to Patreon to drop off a picture. And I understand it because it's a little bit uh, different if you're not used to, to that kind of um, um, scary place. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting used to it. But here's the deal. There's now a website and it's called, you're never going to believe this, www.macrocontest.com. Can you remember that? Macro contest. It's the the clues in the title. It's about the macro contest or competition. All you've got to do is is type that in on a browser, and you go there, and you get to the home page, and that's the only page you'll find because it's the only page there is, I think. But there will be robots waiting for you. Uh, these robots have been trained uh, by uh, curly toes, and uh, they're not friendly. I must say, they're, they're um, the, the opposite of friendly. They're very robotic. And what they'll do is they will take your photographs from you and they will count them. They can count and they'll make sure there are two or one, but not none or you wouldn't be there or three. Because if there are three, I think the robots have death rays. You don't want to give the robots three pictures. You're only allowed to give them two. And if for some reason you forget to put your name, like five people did in this last competition, if you forget to put your name in the, the box where it says put your name here, the robots will vaporize you, I'm, I'm certain. I haven't talked to Curly Toes about the punishments that they're going to mete out, but just judging from their personalities, it's going to be bad. So don't go over there until you're ready to deposit your photographs and keep your fingers away from from their mouth area okay so that's that's fantastic www.macrocontest.com it that's a thing thanks to curly toes it's genius now i want to throw something out there and we're going to do a poll and we'll do it right now let's, let's keep this thing moving cuz time is uh, of the essence Oh gosh, I should have practiced this because I don't know where the poll button is. Oh, let's look at the buttons for just a second because there's a very important one in the bottom that's got a dollar sign on it. This this uh, uh, square thing with a dollar sign in it, this is where you would uh, uh, put a, a dollar or something if you felt so inclined. If Say you were super excited about my beard as nobody is. If you were, then you know, you could show that excitement with 20 cents or 50 cents even. So just think about it. it that's what that's for. And uh, I don't know what the other buttons do. And there isn't one that says poll, which kind of is problematic. But I'll figure that out as we go. I'm going to ask you to answer me a question about the competition. I want to do something to make it more... Uh, something that you can engage with more accurately, um, accurately, more actively. Because uh, right now you drop off a photograph, you may or may not look at the other entries and you just wait to hear. And if you don't hear anything, you figure you didn't win it. And I, I want it to be more uh, enjoyable and educational and uh, just fun for everybody. So I thought about this today as I was recording this video, I thought, why don't I do this live? Why don't I do the judging on the first live stream after the competition closes? And I do it the same way that I actually do do it, uh, is I look at every picture, I make comments, I, I just do it out loud, and uh, then we, uh, uh, I figure out who the winner is, and I do it right there with people looking at me, so I can't kid myself or anything. So. If that sounds interesting, I thought about three ways that it could work. One is we just continue to do it the way I'm, well, the first option is no, just leave it alone and keep doing what you're doing. That's option number one. Option number two is you be the judge, me, meaning me, you just keep judging, but do it live. 
do it uh, so that'll force me to do it quickly but it will it will mean that one of our live um, streams is taken up to do that but I'll show every picture I'll tell you what I'm thinking I'll, I'll give them their score and we'll move on and then at the end of the thing we'll have a winner so that's one way of doing it uh, the third way or the fourth way whatever we're at and I'll relist these in a second is I'll do a pre-screening and I will uh, I, I will cut it down to the 16 um, honorable mentions which is how I do my first cut I take the 50 images and I cut it down to about anywhere from uh, 10 to 20 and then what we would do is I bring those 10 to 20 to you and you vote on them so they'll no we could make it a smaller number make make, uh, make it the last five say and then you as the audience could look at each of these pictures with me talk about it ask questions and then we vote on it and the one with the most votes wins how does that sound so so they're your options and uh, when I ask the question let me <laughs> let me figure out how to do the poll I should have done this a, a second ago but it can't be that difficult can it you know what I need to get somebody like Blair to be my wingman on these live things when I'm doing things like polls so that he can do that while I don't <laughs> while I don't have to think about it but uh, yeah okay so we can't do that so we're gonna try something else add no that's not it I'll tell you what um, Blair you're out there somewhere do you know how to do that do you know how to do a poll he does Joseph you are a poll <laughs> that's, that's not what I meant <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, Robbie knows at least how to spell it, which is good. So, uh, all right. Well, it, and if Blair gets back to me and says, "Yeah, I know how to do it," then um, then I'll follow his lead and we'll and we'll get it done. But otherwise, just be thinking about it. We'll circle back around to this. Uh, the idea being, um, yeah, he, he knew uh, he knew that was coming. Blair knew that I would be asking him to figure that out and he's going to talk to me afterwards so we may have to do the poll next time but that's fine because we have a competition that just started so we've got a month to go all right so here's the thing um we'll we'll figure that out and in the meantime just remember go over to uh www dot um macro contest i'll remember it next time dot com there will be uh, the, the theme, uh, any instructions for dropping off your pictures and all the other stuff will be there. Just, ch just check it out and, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll get back with you about the live judging. But be thinking about it and if you have comments or questions that you want are burning that you want to leave me now, leave them now. I'll read them, I promise. I really want to know what you want to do about this. I talked briefly last week about a captions contest about uh, doing a, a contest where you took a picture and uh, captioned it and there were suggestions that I take the picture and you caption it and um, it kind of went on from there but no decision was made there was some confusion though and I think some people thought that next month or this month now January would be a caption competition as part of the photography competition I'm not going to do that I, I'm going to keep the photo competition all about the photography all about the the themes as we've been doing it the caption thing is something entirely different but I do want to involve you in it because I know a lot of you are uber creative uh, people like Robert uh, um, uh, Storost and, and and others who are good at this kind of stuff and uh, want to, to share their pictures. So here's what we're going to do. So listen up. Here's the plan. I am going to make a calendar that I will be selling through the, the channel or through my website or something. I'll figure that out later. That is going to have, because of the, the number of months in the year, 12 did you know that I learned that today there are 12 months in the year I'm gonna have 12 of my favorite captioned pictures as the 
as the picture for the calendar, you know, so you can see it on the wall. And then on the other part of the calendar where the dates are, there'll be a, a, a corner of it or a window of it, part of it, which will be a guest caption from one of my viewers, which is you. So here's the deal. You have until the end of March, that's three months from now, to send me a caption or 10, as many as you want. Send me a caption, make it a good one, and I will pick 12 that will join me on the calendar. And that will give you the, the most minute micro dose of fame that you could possibly imagine. But it's better than none at all. That's what I think, that's why I'm doing it. So you never know, this could be the, the biggest selling calendar in the history of calendars about macro photography anyway. It won't be, but it, but it could be. So if you're interested in doing a caption, that's what you need to do. Now there's one other thing, rule. You need to email it to me at the regular email, uh, support at, at, or no, contact at alanwallsphotography.com, but you must write caption in the comment in the subject line subject line write caption if you do that i'll check it every few days and gather them if any show up okay so that's the thing if you want to be in a calendar um do you want to see one of the pictures i'm putting in that i just took um two days ago and i'm really happy with so i'm going to show it to you because i can let me put the other thing on by the way this is this, <laughs> this picture I'm getting ready to show you is not going to be on the calendar, but it is the most awful picture. I, I should stop talking and show it to you. Oh, I don't think it'll let me do the full screen thing. Yeah, it does. It's just not very big. That is a, an ant devouring a fly when they were both caught by my net. Oh, you can't see it because I didn't transition. Sorry about that. My bad. Uh, that's a, um, a, a little red ant, a fire ant actually, eating a fly um, and its eyes have gone all satanic looking there. Isn't that creepy? Yeah, but that wasn't what I was going to show you. I also wasn't going to show you my collection of proboscis photographs, uh, though um, I'm proud of this one. No, this was, um, this was a picture that I took for my caption contest and I've actually shown it to the um, the folks on on um, Patreon because um, uh, I, I already wrote the caption for it, but I, I don't have that picture with me uh, to, to show you. But it is it is one of my all-time favorite photographs. How about that? And I just took it two days ago, three days ago. It's called the um, uh, what is it? The, oh, the Merry Skipping um, uh, Weevil. Yeah, a Peruvian Merry Skipping Weevil. And uh, yeah, it's not. There is no such thing as that, but it does appear to be skipping and uh, it, it is uh, hilarious. And um, I can't get it to go any bigger than that, but it, it's, it is a, one of those rare pictures that you get back, back out of your processing that, that you really, really like. And uh, I was thrilled with this one. Anyway, uh, I ought to get back to doing my job here, otherwise I'll get behind. So uh, there's a button I've probably got to press. No, I was coming over here to show you something. What was it? The caption. Um, hang on a second. I'll tell you what. I'll figure that out in the background while we uh, go through the rest of the, the list. But I've got all kinds of pictures I want to show you for, um, uh, for the caption thing. But if you have captions, and they don't have to be side-splittingly funny, just witty, you know? Um, something that will bring a smile to the face of uh, the person looking at the calendar. All right, the other thing we were going to talk about uh, was Macro Talk 2. What is it? When is it? Why is it? Well, it's this. Macro Talk 2 is us getting together, you asking your questions or complaining or whatever it is you want to do, and, and uh, we just do it. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing, but for the people that are currently asleep, um, which is all of Europe, that's the deal. Except Patrick, Patrick may be asleep uh, during 
the, the regular hours. Patrick, you would have to address that. Uh, but yeah, it seems that um, uh, everybody else in Europe is asleep. So that's the plan. And it's uh, going to be every Thursday, two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, central time in America, eight o'clock over there. All right. I won't say that again. Um, let me see. Did I show you the cover? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, that was another thing I wanted to show you. So I'll do that real quick. It's here. That's the, the new cover for the... Um, you may have seen this, actually, if you're a Patreoner, and you may have seen London misspelt, which is a little bit embarrassing, but I did fix it after I noticed it. So this is uh, the, the cover for, for the regular um, Thursday live stream. And we'll try that for a month or two and see how it goes. Okay, I need to get back over to your comments because I think we're probably a little bit behind. Or I am anyway. It's not no. There's no we to it, is there? Uh, I'm the one that gets behind. All right. Does opal count as a mineral? Yes, it absolutely, unquestionably does. And uh, hydrogen, hydronium crystals. Yeah, well, you've got till the end of January. Um, so yeah, go for it. Anything, it doesn't matter. If, it, if, if any normal person would look at it and say, yeah, that's a mineral. If they would look at it and say, uh, that's, that looks like an aardvark or a, um, an aubergine. Both of those would be bad options to, to submit because I probably would reject them. So yeah, if it's a, a, a micro meteor, we have some people who photograph those. Uh, that would be a mineral. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Earth's crust is a mineral, but it's too big. We're, we're basically macro here, so, so size matters. All right. So I'm going back in time here just to make sure I get um, everything covered. I think I left off um, where Blair was uh, being just uh, sour grapes about the whole Christmas and New Year's holiday. <laughs> like I wasn't. Oh dear. Yeah, I bet Houston has plenty of uh, creepy crawlies out and active, Alan. We do too. This, it is uh, 80 degrees here today, by the way. 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. That's in dog years. All right, Canman, how is it up there in Alberta? That's in BC, so it's probably fairly okay up there, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, you have to use an ampersand to make my name go orange, apparently, is the way you do it. Ampersand, you know that, the and, no, no, it's the at, sorry, it's not the ampersand, at. All right, so it's at Alan Wall's photography and it turns it orange, there you go. Gustavo Gatza, I enjoyed your photographs, both of them. Uh, in the competition and um, yeah they may have got an honorable mention they may not did I tell you what the bell was for I invented this bell last night out of bits of a broken motor because I couldn't find a bell that I actually have this bell uh, in the video is used to signify it sounds like a bell doesn't it that's uh, the noise you'll hear when I am reviewing a picture that got on the honorable mention list or is a I called them contenders because I forgot the honorable mention thing so there you go that's a noise you want to listen for if you've just entered a competition there you go how about that that's extra knowledge Laura G welcome glad you made it snowing up there in uh, Peoria land I do hope not Art, welcome. I know it's cold in Massachusetts. All right, David, uh, got some macro stuff for Christmas. You got the four times microscope objective. Excellent. And uh, you, you, the thoughtful person also got you the, the uh, uh, adapter for it. That's, that's brilliant. When I first bought one of those, I had to use the, um, the, the camera uh, body cap that came with it. Uh, you can. It's a very effective way to mount uh, finite objectives. It's just about as good as the adapter, but it's better to have the adapter. All righty. Um, Bill made it from Seattle. Bill, 
good to see you. I'll see you again tomorrow, I believe. I think we have a session planned. Ron, I, I, I wasn't really uh, talking to you so much about the, um, about the name of the thing. I was trying to straighten it out for everybody. I think it was a bit confusing for all. Um, but anyway, now it's clear, I'm sure. Uh, the bracket thing's not going to work. Uh, Blair is uh, saying as he laughs at me, uh, ha, 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 that's how I knew that, that he was laughing at me. Probably brackets will cause the whole, the whole of YouTube to collapse. I learned that from Rick Littlefield. Um, that you can't put certain characters in an email or in a, in, in your, um, in anything in the computer. It causes it to act funky. Anyway, so brackets are out. Don't forget the brackets, guys. Jan, welcome. I'm glad you made it, and thank you for the the nice card. I do appreciate it. And uh, welcome from Honolulu, uh, Tack for Alt. Is that right? That just doesn't sound right, does it? Susan, good evening. I hope the package arrived safely. Um, and Jim, Jan, do I use a large monitor connected to my camera when you're setting up a stack? Yeah, yes. I use a gigantic, I use a television. Should I show it to you? I'll show it to you. Okay, hang on a second, guys. This is, um, this is high tech, what I'm getting ready to do. So it'll probably go awry. Just bear with me. I am going to point the camera at the screen. You won't hear me. Oh dear, it's a bit dark. Or I just unplugged it. Hang on. Big enough? All right. That, that was, that was very, very low tech. I'm sorry about that, but yes, I have a television that I stopped watching television completely a year ago. Um, I just couldn't stand it anymore. It was just so irritating. Uh, and I didn't want to give the television uh, a, 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 you know, ruin it by just sticking it upside down in a closet or something. So I use it as a monitor. I use a direct HDMI hookup to my camera which has a clean HDMI out uh, and I can just um, uh, all my cameras over there so I just can hook it up to the uh, to the TV and have this gigantic picture um, does it make any difference is is the question and you know I'm I'm not very good with my uh, eyesight these days and honestly I don't think it makes any difference. I mean, I'm very conservative about my start point. I'm very conservative about my end point. I leave plenty of padding. I know what my composition is already because I've been looking at the thing under the microscope. So it, I'm not sure it makes that big a difference, but it is pretty spectacular when I have a guest in the studio. Um, uh, then I turn it on <laughs> just because it, it looks pretty pretty fancy but I, I don't really rely on it um, I think I might use it more if it were a proper monitor instead of a television there's something weird about the the television the way the the picture looks that isn't it's not very high resolution so uh, uh, yeah I hope that answers the question I have it and I use it occasionally but I don't rely on it all righty Hey Mike, how is Phoenix? I was reading something odd was going on in Phoenix this week. I can't remember what it was. Weather related, I'm sure. Uh, let me see. Fred, I just looked at your picture as well. Your, yours was the last entry in the, uh, in the competition. Y you know, I'm tempted to talk about that right now. 
but you'll know if I do that you didn't win. Is that okay? Well, it's too late now, isn't it? I just told you. Well, Fred, let me just make sure it was Fred's picture. That would be embarrassing to talk about it if it's not. Fred submitted a, a, a picture of a, a knife. Tell me if that's not yours, Fred. It must be. It was a picture of a, a knife blade and um, it, it made a very useful and interesting point. I'll show it to you. Can I do that? Uh, let me ask permission, actually. Um, Fred, would you, would you just give me a, a yes uh, if it's okay for me to show your entry to the competition in this format? It's going to be on a video tonight, but uh, if you're okay with that, just write yes. And, uh, and then I'll flash it up on the screen and I will, um, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Let me just find it. it. It's interesting because it's something that if you don't think about it, you would, uh, it has application for lots of macro stuff, but it's really useful to know for, 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 for this thing of photographing a knife. Uh, so um, I've got, just got to find the stack of pictures. I put them in a different place every week. Here it is. Got it already. So as soon as he gives me the go ahead, which he hasn't done yet, I don't think. Oh, hang on. No, there's mil Yes, he said, yes, I can. Okay. So I'm going to put his picture up uh, and um, talk about it for just a second. Okay. So this is, this is his picture. And he named it right he did the 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 thing that you do now this is a a, a a serrated knife and if you didn't know that and you were to just look at it because he has photographed the blade absolutely parallel to the sensor in other words that the the, uh, the sensor and the edge of the blade are are running parallel it creates an optical illusion that robs any sense of perspective to a viewer who doesn't know that he's looking at a knife and to me when I open the image it looks like a thick piece of green plastic with scalloped edges uh, cut into it so this is a big flat up and down like a cliff and this is the flat part at the top of the cliff. And that's what my eye wants to see. And it's because you're shooting dead on. L let me show you with my uh, hand gesticulations what I mean. If I'm the sensor and this is the knife like this, I cannot see that that is a gentle slope towards me. My brain resolves it into a thick thing with vertical edges. All you have to do if you're photographing a knife, and I've run, in, run into this doing product photographs, is if you simply tilt the knife away or towards, the, the, uh, create an angle between the, the sensor and the knife edge, all of a sudden these, these ridges fall into perspective and you suddenly see that, no, it's a gentle uh, slope away. Try it and you'll see exactly what I'm saying, that that whole illusion disappears. So there you go. I have no idea why that happens. It's probably, it could just be something in my brain and only my brain uh, that causes it. But uh, yeah, uh, that wasn't the, the reason that um, uh, you didn't win the grand prize though, Fred. Um, I'm not going to get into that other reason. We'll just leave it there and uh, move on to uh, the next um, thing, which is a comment, I'm sure. Let me see. Blair is busy photographing a spoon. It's not, gonna, it's not really going to be as big a problem with spoons, Blair. Um, or forks, for that matter. It's just knives, really. Uh, Rob, uh, Robbie says, uh, usually you lay out a calendar in August for the next year. Oh yeah, yeah, this is next year, Robbie. This is this is a 2024 calendar. Yep, because the year will be about halfway done before I get the paperwork done. So yeah, no, this is for 20. What I want to do is uh, put it together in the, the first three months, uh, get it off to the printers and what, what have you, and then, then get it 
organized and sell it for next year so a christmas present or something like that you know it's um it's just i'm testing the waters to see if anybody would buy anything that's got my name on it um yeah so that's it's for next year is it too early for next year i don't think so not the way uh things pile up okay so where was i who or what is curly toes i'm not going to answer that because that's that's insulting to the man he's he's um i have no idea i have no idea he's a robot overlord is one of his part-time jobs and um, helping me figure out discord is another so uh, you'll have to ask him that he'll show up um, he's also a great photographer by the way uh, he's uh, turned in some really smashing uh, pictures for the competition okay so blair's wishing he had some snow all right we'll send him some peoria send some snow to new zealand would you <laughs> all right uh, gosh it's so hot here today all righty now um i see uh, i see parentheses showing up which uh, i'm going to now ignore what joseph is saying to to jim i guess and uh, I agree with um, I agree with Jim uh, that that he and I should gang up on uh, on Alan that our bugs are better than Houston bugs. You know I wouldn't bet on that. I really would not bet on that. Have you been to Houston? They've got some big bugs over there. And Robbie, I am glad you made it back. Uh, uh, you, you were uh, you were missed. Uh, uh, this has uh, evolved into a really fun evening. Tuesday evening has lots of uh, lots of good stuff. Oh gosh, I've got a list I'm supposed to be looking at. Chat amongst yourselves for a moment. Um, somebody just asked who Curly Toes was. Well, let me tell you something else that Curly Toes has done with Blair. Uh, it's, uh, it's Blair and, and Curly Toes and all of the admin folks actually over at, at the Discord site have undertaken to index these live events. Now, there have been quite a few of them. Uh, by index, I mean to, to help me pull the, the topics that I cover, the, the, you know, the, the important stuff, the photography stuff, out of each of these live stream uh, talks and then put them into a searchable database so that uh, it is another resource that if you're looking for information on the Mitutoyo 10X and it's something we talk about for 10 minutes in one of the live events, you will be able to search for it and find that, that video. And uh, that is going to be a big deal. That is going to help a lot of people, I think, who, who, who struggle to find stuff just because there are 450 videos or whatever out there and articles and everything else, and it's, it's hard to find sometimes. So I think this is going to be a big, big help. Um, let me see. Where were we? About there. All right. If I get tips for the beard, do you get a percentage? Um, to the extent that I get a percentage of your tips for your beard, yes. We'll, we'll have a quid pro quo on that one. Otherwise, no. <laughs> Unless you leave a tip and you can keep half of it. Fred likes live shows. I prefer to interact, says he. Well, I do too. I mean, I... I I love making videos, but videos are my, it is a, a concentrated form of what I do. And it's tiring to make them and it's tiring to watch them sometimes because they are so dense. They've got so much stuff in them. But that's one way to learn. And this is another way to learn. But this is also a way to connect. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's why I'm still doing this. Uh, uh, by by all <laughs> by all normal measures, this this has been not a particularly successful business venture, but it's been the most important thing I've ever done in my life, as far as I'm concerned. And and getting to to meet you guys and interact like this on a regular basis is a huge huge part of that. So that's I wouldn't miss this for anything. 
Um, but uh, even if I never made another video, I wouldn't miss this. And I am not planning on not making another video. I, I do that a lot. So there you go. Uh, I don't think I skipped over anybody. Opal does count. Yep, definitely. I've got a, an Opal that uh, used to be my wife's and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I photographed it in a video though and I can't enter this competition so what am I talking about? Uh, April is also common here. Well, it's common everywhere, Blair. They, they, it comes between uh, March and May. Um, everybody has an April. Or you mean for, for calendars? Oh, you're putting out a calendar. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, no, not going to put it out till next year. It'll take me that long to do it. All right. And I, I will record a Christmas album if you'd like as well. That would be fun. I'll get my ukulele out and have at it. All right, I'm waiting to see a question. There must be a, a question. Oh, somebody asks, Bruce asks, caption for the weevil. Where's the finish line? Good point. I should find it while, uh, uh, while we're nattering back and forth. I know where it is. It was in Photoshop where uh, I put the caption on it. Let me just find it and I'll flash it up on the screen. I thought it was kind of funny, but uh, that, that's just me. Here it is. I found it. So this is um, the weevil again with the caption. I hope this will be visible. Let me do some transitioning. I will hush while you read it. It is, of course, not a real name of a weevil and it's just all made up it was just for fun a laugh but it was the picture that i wanted to to really show but uh i have so many of these that uh yeah it's it's i've been doing it for years um just for fun so um it won't be any problem filling a calendar but i want to see yours i want to see what other people think is funny um, so don't forget to, to, to do that. Robert, I am waiting on yours for sure. All right, let me see. Where were we? I've got the comments thing to look at again. The top of the image is cut off. Oh, no. Did, did nobody see that? I mean, I'm seeing the full-size thing on my screen. Does anybody else only see part of that weevil? Please tell me. That's uh, disconcerting. I'm going to have one more, one more look at that. Now, according to my computer, that is filling the screen, and um, that should be the whole thing should be visible. If it is not, please uh, somebody let me know. Or well, heck, if you <laughs> if you let me know, I won't be able to see it because it's under the weevil. I'll I'll move I'll. Stre unstretch the weevil to see the comments. Alrighty, where was I? So, have I tried photographing Labradorite? No. Uh, ask me, do you know what Labradorite is? No. No, I don't know what it is either. I assume that it's uh, it's a mineral found on Labrador, but beyond that, um, um, you're on your own. So, uh, do you guys have uh, good minerals to photograph? Are you going to to go to to one of those shops and 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 buy some jade eggs or whatever um, that that lady actress uses to to center her? chi or whatever that would be uh that would be interesting actually so uh yeah minerals we're back on calendars no i've just gone i'm on the wrong part of the comments again this is terribly difficult to keep up with i need to hire somebody to to sit here and uh and do this 
complicated thing. Yeah, cheap way to get calendars is to buy them in January, right? But I don't, I don't want the cheap way because I'm selling the cameras, uh, sell, selling the calendars. I want the most expensive way. What month would that be in? Oh, dearie me. What does Labradorite look like? I need to see a picture of that. I may have photographed it. I doubt it, though. All right. So, um, nobody else has said anything about the image being cut off. Oh, uh, Joe's telling me that Labradorite is a sort of uh, a poor man's amylite. <laughs> well, I should have known that. What's amylite? D don't tell me. It's the rich man's Labradorite. I'll look it all up afterwards. Yep, so Ron says it's all visible and Blair can see all the weevils, so we're good. And um, yeah, that, that uh, picture of Fred's was good, Bruce. I, I liked it too. I liked the, the idea of using different gels from different angles from two different lights. Wait till you see the pictures that won this, uh, this competition. I was floored. I mean, they're always good, but this this month was just unbelievable. I cannot wait to show them to you. Well, I can. I can wait till t tomorrow to show them to you. I'm going to have to. I think it'll take all night. So, I've got some minerals, by the way. Does anybody need a mineral to photograph? I've got a box of radioactive minerals that a viewer sent me. Um... I'm not sure that that was a nice thing to do, but it, I've still got them. If anybody wants a mineral, I'll lend it to you. All right. So let me see where we are. A photo of mineral spirits will not troll Alan. That, that might be a very fascinating photograph. I'd like to see that. Somebody, oh, there was another picture from the competition, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to blow that person's cover because they're not here, but there was an interesting discussion. I'll try to remember it for next time. Um, talking about flash to photograph uh, dihydrogen monoxide and hydrogen hydronium. I tell you what, you guys need to get a room. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, so uh, there we go. This always happens when Joseph visits. He, he, he will, he'll wander around uh, with his cocktail and, and, and pick fights with, with people in Australia and just um, stir things up. It's good. It keeps the, the blood flowing, Joseph. You're, you're welcome. All right. So let me see. What time is it? Oh, we're good for once on time. That's good. Uh, Joseph, yes, you do um, You do need to uh, get into Discord, and that's easy to do. If you go to the, uh, the, the show description, the, the uh, video description from any of my videos, but this one will have one as, as well, there's an invitation. It's just the URL. It is unlimited number of uses and uh, unlimited period of time to use it. So just grab that, go over to Discord, and you are a member when you when you do that. And um, yeah, it's in all my uh, show uh, notes. Um, I could even type it in here, uh, or somebody could type it in there um, uh, if I was to find it. But let me keep going or I'm going to run out of time. Uh, question from Blair. Uh, you talked about binocular microscope for prepping insects, but what magnification range do you usually use for that? Well, magnification and stereo microscopes uh, is a fairly confusing topic uh, because there are several places that the image is magnified uh, in a stereoscope, especially the kind that I have. I, I have a Leica mz6 which has a range uh 
I'd have to look it up to give you the exact range, but it, it's not a, p a powerful uh, microscope. I have a, a 1x objective in it now, but I also have a 0.5 objective in it. it, it the idea is I want to be able to see small insects uh, magnified large enough for me to manipulate them uh, clearly and to see the joints and everything. So I'm, I'm looking at 20, 30 times magnification. There's no, there's really no advantage to being able to get up to 80 or uh, whatever. To calculate, the, the, the Leica microscopes have a, a table that, that comes in the back of uh, any of their manuals that gives you the various um, settings that you need to, to um, check, to multiply together to get your actual magnification. It's the eyepieces, of course, and then the, uh, the, the lens is internal to, to the body and then the objective. And uh, you multiply all, all them together and you, well, you, you add them together and you, you end up with the total magnification. I, mine is almost always at the minimum with the 1x objective, uh, which would, um, at, at, uh, uh, with the, the microscope all the way racked back, uh, on on focus would give me about um, oh a house fly would fill up the middle quarter of the field and at maximum magnification it would fill it and that's all I will ever need uh, though when I when I got my pond water um, the other day and was was doing all of that looking and photographing I wished I had more magnification so maybe I'll get a, a higher magnification objective at some point I bought this for a, um, a thing, it's for a photograph, not to, to use as a microscope, though I did look through it and it is shockingly, shockingly bad. But uh, did, did anybody know this? Little known fact, microscopes are expensive. Um, I was looking on an auction site that Robert, my friend Robert, uh, directed me to, to, to where you could get a, an auction get a good price on a microscope because I really would like to get a decent compound microscope I didn't realize that the options were you could get a decent compound microscope or a, a house if if you'd like if you'd rather have something to live in than look through you could get a house they are so expensive um, but um, yeah apparently you can get good deals in the auctions but I, I, I couldn't see them knocking 99.99 percent off the price you never know though I'll, I'll give it I'll give it a try but I have no uh, hope so that's uh, that that's what I'm talking about and listen I used a cheap $200 am, uh, amscope uh, stereo dissecting microscope for years and it was a, just a, a rubbishy microscope it was like a magnifying glass and it was all I ever needed it was perfect it was great for positioning and cleaning and now I have probably one of the best microscopes and the image is so beautiful it's so crisp and sharp but it's expensive. It's a, it is not a cheap one. Even though it's 20 years old, it's expensive. So uh, it's all about how much you want to invest in it. I, I will say this. The more you invest in a really optically superior microscope, the more you will want to use it. Um, and I will spend an afternoon just going through old subjects, old specimens that I have looking for new compositions or new ideas so spending a day looking through that microscope is is a treat for me wonderful i love it all right jamie quit watching television 20 years ago good for you i mean there was nothing on then either i just didn't realize it um yeah it's it really it really is what what do you guys think you like television who watches television who has time to watch television it doesn't macro photography take up a lot of your time and and everything else you do i just uh, it seems to it seems to just uh, be impossible to find time to do that did anybody laugh at that caption i don't think so i didn't hear a single chuckle 
Maybe this calendar is not a good idea. All right. Yeah, Roy, I don't think we did miss much. Is everybody from Australia signing their uh, uh, signing their messages with a kangaroo? Is that a thing now? I like it. I like it. So, Robert joined us. Hey, Robert, we're, we're wrapping up, old chum. Make it a bit earlier next week. We'll come on um, Thursday. I said I wasn't going to repeat that time, so I won't. Uh, yes, uh, minerals. There are the, 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 I didn't want to say anything about this, but seeing as you, you are the elite here, uh, I'll mention this. You don't just have to photograph a mineral like it, it is. I mean, uh, you can um, maybe use a little bit of uh, UV light or uh, something different to, to show it in its glory. So think about that. Uh, this, is a, this is a very creative month, this minerals. I can't wait to see what we come up with. You can't wait to see what, uh, what, what um, uh, Gilles came up with up there in Canada with nothing to do and all that snow. Um, he, he was uh, dissolving vitamin C tablets in vodka and then crystallizing it and taking pictures of it. And they looked like psychedelic sombreros. In, really impressive, really impressive. He could have also got uh, one of them. I don't know. I do know, but I can't say. All right, let me see, where are we? Uh, Fred has forgiven me already. That was good. That was quick. Good. I'm glad. All right. I think we're just about wrapping it up. I know, Blair. It was a joke. I, my, my not getting your jokes is my joke back. You see, it's it's super uh, high level quippery, definitely. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, I'd rather be reading a book or shooting photos too. You know it. All right. There is one, th oh, Blair says, one of the things he loves about macro photos is the absence of scale that can make it so ambiguous. All right, remember remember that statement from, from one, of, one of our uh, experienced macro photographers when you see the winner from this competition this last month, because that is the key to, to, to this spectacular photograph. Wait till you see it. I, gosh, I wish I could show you, but then you wouldn't watch the video and um, they, therefore you wouldn't like it and uh, I wouldn't get voted in the algorithm or whatever happens and uh, I'd be broke. So I should just show it to you because it means nothing will change. <laughs> No, I'm going to show it in the video. I, I want you to see it though. How many videos? Uh, well, I've made 450. Um, and uh, yeah. They're, they're, some of them are really terrible. But uh, yeah, there's lots and lots. Now... Um, Okay, now, that, oh, sorry, I didn't see the brackets. Here I am reading private messages between Joseph and, and uh, Fred. So uh, there you go. All right. Who has an opal earring? Alistair. The whole thing is opal or it's an opal in an earring? Oh, well, we'll see it in the competition. I can't wait to see it. All right. Somebody was helping a knife sharpener. Joseph was helping a knife sharpener. Everybody has to have a hobby, right? Oh, you were oh, very interesting. So um, uh, Joseph is talking to Fred saying that uh, he was helping a knife sharpener photograph knives. So you've encountered this then, Joseph, I take it. Uh, it's, it is an odd thing to, to, to see. Even when you know it, it's disconcerting because it looks like a, a thick thing. All right. Let me see. 
I think I answered every question, but I don't know. I'm going to just look at the... Um, uh, Blair says I missed his question about microscopes. I think I didn't. I didn't miss it. But I think I might be out of order on the thingies. But don't worry about it. Lights, Leica, Nikon and Olympus all make great microscopes, says Robbie. And he is right. They're expensive. A decent compound made in China will give good results for much less. I would rather buy a very old Leica or, or Lights or Nikon or Olympus, very old, I mean, a, a long out of fashion, and, and uh, get it fixed up than I would. I, I, th this is one thing that, that I, don't, uh, I don't think the, the Chinese, by and large, have got figured out yet, is optics. They, they, I mean, that may be a silly thing to say to that you guys know more about it than I do. But I looked at a lot of microscopes before I decided on um, the, the one I have. And um, yeah. Anyway, question, question from Walter. Is it better to focus bracket from front to back or from back to front? It doesn't matter so long as you're consistent. The, the program is going to, to correct the, the alignment by, by adjusting the size and it will know immediately which direction you're going in. I recommend to people that I'm teaching that they just do the same thing every time, that they get in a, a consistent habit and that will minimize mistakes, but the, the software doesn't care. Some people had, have never had the pleasure of using a Leica microscope. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was one of those people. I just was completely blown away. Uh, 7 to 45 is uh, uh, Robbie's uh, stereo microscope. Uh, yeah, I, I um, that's about, that, that's about the, the, that's what my um, um, uh, Amscope was, I think, 7 to 30, something like that. All right, let me see. Is anybody planning on coming uh, uh, on uh, Thursday? It'll be the first one, so there may not be anybody there, but I'll, I'll show up and, and bring a book to read or something, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to anybody who shows up. Um, is that, uh, Robin, is that what you call um, people from Tasmania? A tassie? I didn't know that. That's, that's excellent. Um, Robbie had a Swift 350 trinocular and an Omax dark field. Okay, yeah, uh, I've seen the Omax, and um, yeah, they're they're probably at the better of the of the imported scopes. Sure. In fact, my friend Bud Perot has an M scope, and it's a very it's a very decent microscope. It's just you you could not mistake that for a, a Leica. I don't think. All right. Let me see. I think we're just about done. Polarized light, crystallized vitamin C, classic, not classic outside of Canada, I don't think. I'd never, never seen that done. Oh, yeah, in, in, uh, in high school we did that. All right. Jamie asked if you sold my framed weevil. Oh, no, no, I didn't. No. Um, I, 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 was, I was kidding about that. The... Um, the, the 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 one I did in the in the video no no I didn't I didn't sell that uh, it's on my wall um, it's uh, it's not this weevil either it's uh, it's one that's not as good a weevil as this so I'll probably I'm gonna do a video on framing uh, the, the I'll, I'll actually do that I'll commit to that now I'll, I'll frame this because I love this picture uh, the one I showed you earlier so I'll frame that and um, uh, and make a video of it and then if anybody wants to buy that one I could I mean I, I, I don't mind selling the prints um, it's shipping that that makes it not worthwhile um, yeah it's, it's just nuts how much it costs okay I think we're done uh, Fred will you be able to see the entries on the new website haven't decided yet I think that the answer is almost certainly going to be yes but I need to talk to Curly Toes. I mean, that would be, yeah, or a showstopper if we can't. I mean, 
I want people to be able to go over there and look at other people's pictures. I mean, that's part of the, the fun of this. Um, so yeah, I, I'm sure there'll be a way to do that. And of course, after the fact, I think we need to think about a way to archive all of our competition uh, entries so that everybody can look at them. I mean, th this is about learning. Maybe there's some way to annotate uh, some of my comments, if any of them have used anybody. Uh, but yeah, let me think about that. We, we, we've got a work in progress here, the, the competition is. And there was another thing about the competition. I can't go into it now because it's too late, but I am planning on, on splitting the, the uh, entries. So that, so that we don't have uh, people who are really, really excellent, excellent photographers sweeping the prizes every week once we get a sponsor. Uh, I want it to be fair so that everybody has a crack at it. Uh, and I'm going to think about the best way to do that. All right, so uh, you guys gave up on the brackets. It was, a good, it was good that we tried it, though. Um, So I, Fred, just bear with me on the answer to that. By the time Thursday rolls around, I should have an answer for the other live stream. And remember, anytime I do a live stream, it is a video. So you'll be able to check on, uh, on what I found out then. Um, a Nikon uh, Optifot, I think, is... No, um, Joseph, the, the, uh, Rick has a, uh, a Labophot, I believe. Um, at least the, he has the focus block for it. Beautiful microscope. All right. So Walter's in for Thursday. Great. So I won't be by myself. And Alan may make it as well. Best jokes on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of you. Yeah. They're not actually jokes. This is just me talking. This is how I talk to everybody. Ask Laura. I talked to Laura and she knows that this is just normal. All right. Uh, gosh, uh, loads of people are going to try to be there Thursday. That's fantastic. Um, they, uh, uh, Joseph's talking about a local photographer they have on the art show circuit who does vitamin C, caffeine, aspirin, etc. Well, you need to tell him that he's going to get ulcers uh, from doing all of that uh, acidic stuff. Oh, you mean he photographs it? Okay, fair enough. That's different. Okay. Uh, that was a super good Weevil stack. Thank you. It's, it's one of the, the best, and you never know when they're going to turn up, but that really is one that I love to look at. It's, uh, it doesn't have a scale out of place. just worked. All right. Great art will be there, and... Um, Find a YouTube channel called Microbe Hunter. I have been watching that for years, my friend. Uh, but I, I just obviously don't follow the advice too well. Uh, you weren't around, uh, Robbie. I was talking, I think it was last week, about my adventures with pond water. First time since, since high school or preschool or whenever I first looked at it. I spent a whole weekend looking at pond water and, and seeing everything that you could see. It was just marvelous. Loved it. Anyway, it's time. It's, it's time for me to go edit that video uh, before it gets too late. So uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. And, um, yeah, we're, we're not gonna, I'm not going to hold out for you showing up on, um, uh, on uh, Thursday, Bruce, but hopefully you can make it on uh, Saturday. I think that's... Uh, Sunday morning for you but anyway um, check the times and see uh, all right guys I think we're done Tassie's a nickname for a Tasmanian right that's what I thought okay good well you're welcome Robin uh, it's my pleasure you know I'd do this even if you guys weren't watching but it's a lot easier when you do all right guys take care Stay safe and be well, and uh, I'll have this video out shortly, um, or as soon as I possibly can, and I'll see anybody who's interested on Thursday. And if you're a Patreon person, please come on Saturday, Saturday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. All right? Sounds good. Take care. Be well.